you are welcome to HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show, where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. In the early days of the R. Kelly takedown, by those who technically had been stealing from him throughout his three decades of hustling it out with his amazing music career, everything possible was being done to make sure he was looked at as the worst man that ever lived. What observers found surprising though, is how an entire contingent of city authorities seemingly hired by Sony or whoever paid their motivations that season were so involved in this mudslinging campaign. As if the airing of the illegal series and Dream Hampton production surviving R. Kelly on Lifetime Sony Entertainment Television was not enough, on the morning of January 16, 2019, the Chicago City authorities took to R. Kelly's studio building with lots of security, to conduct what they called an inspection, as though to suggest the women in the documentary had been living in the studios. The city inspectors gave what was a very lame excuse for invading R. Kelly's space, suggesting that while the property is zoned as commercial, some people I don't know from where had complained that there were some people living inside. The authorities had concocted the story just to be able to gain access to this building, surround it like there was a murderer hiding on the inside, and make a scene as an addition to the bad publicity the docuseries had already made. We are meant to believe it was the same motivation that saw Dream Hampton and her Sony counterparts make the docuseries that drove the so-called city inspectors to storm R. Kelly's studio. If the building had been housing illegal occupants throughout R. Kelly's tenancy period, why did the city authorities have to wait until the release of the surviving R. Kelly documentary to conduct a search? This shows a total conflict of interest, considering it's the city authorities' core duty to make sure the buildings are inspected regularly for this, but had to do it only when it became necessary for the record label Sony to take him down. According to a CBS Chicago reporter, on the day of the inspection, a man who identified himself as R. Kelly's stepbrother tried to access the building but failed, and soon after was confronted by this white woman who evidently had a culture of pointing fingers at black people, something she did repeatedly while shouting the words, you need to go down when Robert Kelly goes down, you are defending him and you need to go down. It was clear this woman who pretended to be a fan of R. Kelly, that had only recently abandoned his music after watching the surviving R. Kelly documentary was never a fan after all. That certainly isn't how fans operate when their star is caught up in a scandal of this nature. When you're a star, there is always that group of people who hate you so much for the success you have registered they wish was theirs. Full of envy, they resort to hating you for no particular reason. Not that you did anything wrong to them, but only because they cannot come to terms that it's your time and not theirs. Surprisingly, such people will associate with your art a great deal. They will even come to your shows and buy your music records. However, when the opportunity strikes and you are involved in a public scandal that is likely to take you down, they are quick to partake in what the scandal offers, and that is the opportunity to finally exude their long-held feeling of envy and jealousy to let their anger out, and to place you into a space they have long wished for you. This woman CBS encountered outside R. Kelly's studio that day is no exception. The way she told the gentleman off exploding with an angry outburst was not excusable. What did she know for God's sake? Only because she watched the bogus series, and she had made her judgment? It beats my understanding. The way she took pleasure in pointing her finger though reminded me of the dark days of slavery, when white folk did a lot of pointing of fingers at black people who worked on their farms tirelessly on a daily for no pay. In a statement made to the press though, the man who identified himself as R. Kelly's stepbrother defended the R&B king when he insisted the singer did nothing wrong, and that the women knew exactly what they were doing, going out there and trying to get paid for no work done whatsoever. He added that R. Kelly is not a monster but a human being like everyone else. The woman on the other hand said she watched all six episodes of the surviving R. Kelly documentary in one night, and that it made her sick to the stomach because she was convinced that R. Kelly was guilty. I was sick to my stomach. Oh, this woman must be a sinless saint from above who had just landed in Chicago from heaven that morning, and inspired by the Holy Spirit to bring R. Kelly to order. On the other hand though, her actions were not far from defining her as the racist she probably is, who had hated the idea of the black man R. Kelly being great and globally celebrated, and had finally received her long-awaited opportunity to point a finger at black men again. 
If this wasn't the case, why then would she attack another black man for his presence at the studio, and for having a different opinion? Well, she may have enjoyed her five minutes of fame, but she also reminded us how our great-grandfathers were treated back in the years, when they were used and abused by white folk whose farms they tilled for absolutely zero pay. Another event that confirms this sudden siege of R. Kelly's studios was never about the women, but intended to tarnish his image was the presence of his said landlord at the building on that fateful day, who claimed had been demanding R. Kelly rent in arrears equivalent to approximately $80,000 and had to make this known to the reporters. Of course this was all intended to make R. Kelly appear more than the predator they had named him, but also as a man who doesn't pay his bills. What's even more wicked is that the landlord who as of January 16, 2019 said R. Kelly owed him only slightly over $80,000, in a syndicate court ruling with Sony's help managed to receive a whopping $1.5 million as rent compensation, also walking away rich like the women who started the scandals. To enable this fraudulent ruling and payment, Sony offered to freeze R. Kelly's royalties, and with a court turnover order managed to take an additional $155,000 from his Bank of America account, all in the name of compensating a landlord he owed so little. After hearing this, I swore to God I would never bank with the Bank of America. This was daytime robbery. According to Roger Abbott, fame should not make a person guilty. There isn't much R. Kelly has done that other men don't do. Many men have more than one girlfriend, they disappoint them and it's normal. R. Kelly is being called to justice only because he is famous and that's unfair. I was wondering how Judge Ann Donnelly managed to take R. Kelly's money out of his commissary account, but after learning that Sony alone did the very same thing from his Bank of America account, I am now thinking there is nothing impossible in America. It looks like the pointing of fingers is nothing, they will do anything they please to you and no one will hold them accountable. It's a shame on America. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.